Hey y'all, it's the girl Stephanie. Today I got my May favorites for you. I know it's mid-month. It's just a reoccurring thing. I'll try and straighten it out for you, but that means the next favorite is gonna be in two weeks. Do you wanna see that? I have some other stuff I could talk about for sure. Uh, today I got some fancy lotions and creams to talk about. So let's start off with a mask that I've been really into and this is the Glam Glow Gravity Mud Firming Treatment. This is the mask that turns you into the Tin Man. <laughs> it kind of uh, goes from a milky white color into a very true metallic silver. You use a brush to brush the mask on and this is the Glam Glow brush. Gently brush it on to your skin, a very um, decent layer and you wanna make sure to avoid your eyebrows as this is a peel off mask. You use this little nubby guy at the end of the brush to kind of wipe off the edges of the mask. I usually just do the, all the edges around my jawline and then peel it off. It's so satisfying to get it all in one go as well. Like I've done this a few times now and the last couple times I got it all in one go and it was just like awesome. You end up with skin underneath that is just so nice. It feels so tightened, but at the same time, just like supple and not dried out. I think that is the thing with a lot of these like tightening masks and firming treatments is that I've felt like it really dried out my skin and I can get flaky sometimes. Have not really been having that issue um, as of late, but uh, this definitely does not dry your skin out and it makes you feel, yeah, just so ready. Just so ready for makeup. I used this today before putting on my makeup and I felt like my foundation went on really nicely and it's just like a fun treatment to do in general. I really love this guy. Peyton decided to join us today, although as always, does not face the camera. She's very suspicious of these new curtains. We just put these up uh, yesterday actually, so I could have a uh, bedroom. And she's just very, very suspicious of things that are hanging. She keeps walking around them like, what is that? Anyways, I got a couple more lotions. As I said, the next product I'm gonna talk about is the Aveen, or Aven, is it Aveen? Yeah, I think it might be Aven actually. This is the Skin Recovery Cream, and this is just such a nice, straightforward face moisturizer. Does not have any scents. During the winter time, I was really consistently using the La Roche-Posay Secret Plast Balm because it is much thicker, and I still use that one at nighttime, but now that it's getting warmer, definitely getting hotter here in LA, this one is just, a like lighter, nicer version of that. And this guy is hypoallergenic. It's just a really straightforward face lotion. If you're looking for that, you could definitely check this one out. If you watch my channel for a minute, you know that I'm truly committed to jojoba oil on my body. I love jojoba oil. I've been through like, I don't know, at least 20 bottles of jojoba oil over the years. But the one downfall is that it doesn't really, it doesn't have a scent. It has like a kind of toasty, nutty, small scent, but I sometimes crave something that smells nice, and my um, skin on my body is not as sensitive as on my face. It's definitely not as sensitive as it used to be in general, like in the past as well, so I decided to venture into a couple lotions, and I've been trying out the Corez Body Butter in Guava, and this stuff, it smells so freaking good. This stuff is thick. It takes a minute to rub in. It's not one of those like, rub it in and go, like you gotta really work it into your skin. And it's just really moisturizing too. I was really impressed by how moisturized my skin has been feeling. Uh, I use it mostly on my arms and on my legs. I'll still continue to use whole oil like on my chest area because I do tend to get some uh, breakouts on my chest. I actually have like, a couple right here. So I gotta be careful in this area with scents and stuff. Uh, so I haven't really done it in that area, but on my arms and legs, it's been doing great. And the scent, even though it's very subtle, lingers, which is really nice. I actually bought a full bottle of the fake scent. I just like went for it online because I bought a little one of this and I kind of went through it super fast. So I just went for the fake, but I, I mean, I like this scent a lot, but I love the guava scent. So I wish I would have just bought a big one of this guy. But once this is out, I'm definitely switching back to this one. These are just really wonderfully scented very moisturizing lotions. I can't do my main favorites without mentioning my girl Jen. Hey, what's up, you're watching, love you, you're my best friend. Jen's collaboration with ColourPop, mind changing, mind altering. Let's start off with this lip product right now. I lined my lips with Dohi, which is the lip liner in her collection. This lip pencil has an exact matching ultra satin liquid lipstick, but it's also a great lip liner for Generation X, which is 
her lippy stick, which is a matte X lippy stick. When Jen said that she was coming out with coral colors, I was like, of course, that's your signature color. You gotta do it. But I wasn't really sure if I was gonna be too into it, to be honest. And the moment I slapped this on my lips, I was like, dang, I've been missing out for a minute. It is such a, like, a vibrant, beautiful color. I think this is a great transitional coral color for people who enjoy bright reds, perhaps. But I don't know, I feel like coral is one of those colors that people just don't think is gonna look good on them. But let me tell you right now, it's gonna look good on you. I have seen so many different people with different skin tones slap this guy on and it looks good on them. So, you know, I'm converted. I really love this color. I was also concerned that I was gonna make my teeth look kind of yellowish. I haven't whitened my teeth since I was in high school, by the way. Something I definitely need to come around to because I've been drinking a lot of coffee, but it does not have that effect. I think it does have like a kind of blue tone in here that does help your teeth look a little bit whiter. So I especially love this one. I do love Doki as well. I've been wearing it. I'm just surprised at myself. The other item from the collection I really wanna talk about is En, which is a super shock shadow from her Quad. This is one of four colors in her collection. And this is just a beautiful champagne shimmery color with silver shimmer flecks. Oh man, I've been using this as a highlight on my eyes. I've even just done it solo on my eyes. I've been especially using this like crazy on my cheekbones and been doing a little bit on the Cupid's bow, which I never did before. This is just such a beautiful color. It has that like sparkle to it that I love. I think highlighters a lot of times are just purely shimmer, you know, but I like some chunks of glitter in there and this is just, you know, the perfect little guy for so many purposes. My next item is my new vlogging camera. This is my Canon G7X. I guess it's not that new. I got it during Coachella uh, to replace my Olympus pen, which was an exchangeable lens camera. I've been trying to vlog more and I just didn't even realize how much of a game changer this guy was gonna be. Uh, to be honest, using an exchangeable lens can be a little bit taxing when you're trying to just get like a single shot in the moment, uh, taking off the lens cap and storing the lens cap somewhere and then figuring out what's going on with my camera. This guy, I just turn it on, record, and we're good to go. I really love it that has a flip up screen like this. So when I'm talking, I can see myself pretty easily. If you watched any of my recent vlogs, it's all been on the G7X. Really clear, pristine footage. Low light footage is amazing. Better than any of my other cameras. So yeah, I'm really hyped in this. I know they're coming out with a G8X or they might already have come out with a G8X. Um, I got this camera, I believe like $100, $150 off because it was right during that transition period, but I'm so happy with this. So if you can buy this on sale, I would say go for it. I got a game I wanna talk about. If you are easily sucked into games, like iPad games, like I was sucked into, you know, SimCity, Rick and Morty, like that kind of game, just don't, just skip this part. Just don't don't watch it. Or if you wanna get sucked into another game, then go ahead and watch this, because you're going to. This is Fallout Shelter. A lot of y'all probably know about Fallout, which is what this little mini game is based off of. The world is pretty much turned into a wasteland that's like radiated and dangerous, and there's creatures that'll attack you. And this is like a little Fallout Shelter that you have to take care of. You have to take care of like energy, water, food, and the little, Residents, they all have different skill sets that you can alter by what weapons you give them, clothing you give them, and you can also train them, train people to go out into the wasteland to gather gear, and you can give them pets, and the pets give them like different skills as well. I have just gone so obsessive with this thing. Uh, at this point, I kind of check it a few times a day and go back into it, but there was a period of time where I feel like I was just on this for hours every single day. I'm a little bit embarrassed to say I spent real money on this guy too. So uh, that's how obsessed I became with this game. But if you are interested in those kind of games, play this, cause you're gonna have a blast. All right, this video is turning out to be very long. I can tell already, but there's a couple things I wanna talk about uh, in the end here. First of all, I think that some of you have seen uh, Jen and my website called wildlavender.co. This is something that we have both been working on for a while, and I think there's a little bit of confusion as to what it is, obviously, because I have never spoken about it on my channel yet. It's pretty much a site where Jen and I get to curate articles 
that we would like to read ourselves. Some of the articles are written specifically for the site. Some of the articles are shared from other sites and very soon Jen and I are going to be writing our own articles for Wild Lavender which will have a section for y'all on there. I personally love reading sites like Buzzfeed and Refinery29 and like, you know, these little articles are like tips and tricks. I just love that kind of stuff. So when we got the opportunity to create a site like that, uh, we went for it. Obviously the site is in a very infant stage right now. So we would love to hear from you what kind of material you would like to hear from us because we get to cover any range of subjects, not really necessarily just concentrating on, you know, fashion, beauty, but sex and relationships, travel, inspiration. It's just kind of like the world is our oyster when it comes to this site. We're really excited to move forward with this project. And uh, yeah, we would love for you to give us some feedback. Speaking about sex and dating, um, I wasn't really gonna bring this up, but I guess, you know, just, just to clear the air. So I guess somebody made an OkCupid account uh, that was me and a couple of y'all sent it over my way. Thank you so much if you did that. Uh, that account was not me, just wanted to clear the air. It was a very interesting account. They weren't really trying to catfish somebody. They put all my information, like it said something along the lines of like, hi, I'm Stephanie and I have a YouTube channel link. This is my Instagram link. They linked up all my stuff. Um, I even had a personal friend of mine <laughs> message me and ask if it was me. Uh, so I guess it really, went out there for some reason, but yeah, was not me. I do not have any current dating profiles up. The other like weird thing about it too was it gave all my information and then it was like looking for casual sex. So no, I'm, I'm not on that site. That profile got taken down. Not mad at the person who created the profile or anything, but I feel like if you're trying to catfish somebody, maybe don't put my actual information because then I got some weird DMs, definitely from some strange dudes. So that was a little bit unpleasant, but I mean, it's all cleared out now. Just wanted to tell y'all, thank you for keeping an eye out. If you see any more strange dating profiles, please let me know. All right, on that note, ending my favorites. If you like this video, please subscribe and let me know you enjoy watching these videos. I love y'all and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.